In this video, I'm going to show you Notify. I'm going to explain what it is, how it works, and how you can go about installing it for yourself. So what you can see on the screen here is Notify itself. Now, Notify is a simple self-hostable notification service, right? So the way this works is Notify will actually send out notifications to any devices subscribed to what are called topics. And you can see here, I'll go into more detail in a second on what a topic is. And then any devices that are subscribed to that topic will receive that notification. Really straightforward and simple, right? So there's a lot of concepts and there's a lot of examples you can use here. So one that I've been playing around with is just sending a simple message saying that a backup was successful. So a way this could work is that you could have a script and I'll go through some examples in a second that by the time that script has finished and run, you could then go, cool, once you've finished that, send this message to this topic, the tech docs uh, hyphen test topic to say that the backup is successful. And then I'll get a notification on my MacBook here. I'll get a notification on my iPhone or whatever, right? And be like, cool, I now know that uh, that backup was successful and I can go on about my day. Or if I could have notifications saying someone's trying to SSH into one of my servers, I'll get a notification straight away, right? So that's the whole idea. So on the screen here on the right hand side, again, that's just a notify dashboard. And on the left hand side is my server. And this is where notify is running. It's just running inside of a Docker container. And again, I will show you how you can go about installing all of this on the other side once we just cover these key points. So a simple way to send a message, especially if you're just testing your uh, topics and making sure that they're all working, you can see here, we can send a simple curl command to our topic here. So we're going to send a curl message, right, with the context of backup successful. So that's the content that we're gonna be sending. And we're saying, hey, look, send this to our topic here. And this here is the domain that I have Notify running on. This could be an IP address, but for uh, notifications and everything to work properly, you want this running on HTTPS and then forward slash the topic, right? Which is this one here, TikToks hyphen test. And if I just hit enter, you can see straight away, we've just got notified that that backup was successful. Now this was a really simple example, right? But in theory, you can think of how this would work in the wide scheme, uh, scheme of things. This could be on the end of a GitHub action, like your CI CD pipelines when an event has finished or an error has happened. Any scripts you have, whatever, it's kind of like endless possibilities and a lot of services integrate Notify as well. So like, you know, when you can like, if you set up a self-hosted service and then it's like, oh, you can send this uh, message via to your Discord or whatever, a lot of them will support Notify as well. And just to show you again, if you want to set up another topic, what we can do is go subscribe to topic and we can enter one in here. Now, the thing here to think of is that I'm using a self-hosted service, right? So I'm, and it's not exposed to the internet, so no one can just subscribe to my service. If you enter in notify.techdocs.nz and try to use a topic, you're not gonna hit anything because my server doesn't send anything outside my network because that's just how I have it for testing. You can also just use their service as well. But the thing is, you want to make sure that your topic names, as they say here, can't be easily guessed because otherwise someone could subscribe to your topic. Hence why you probably just want to self-host it yourself. So what you can do here is you can generate a name. So if you click generate, it will just create a random one for you, you know, which is a lot harder to guess. But let's just use one of their random generated names. Let's just grab that one and we'll hit subscribe. So what we've done is we've essentially just created a new topic, right? A new place for us to send notifications to. And you can see here that it gives us an example on how to test this as well. So I could copy this and paste it in. One thing I know is that I just need to send, uh, put HTTPS on the front here. And if I hit enter, bam, we've got hi. We can send whatever message we want. So as you can see here, I can keep sending those messages. I can change it as well. I could set any sort of message I like. Boom, there you look at that. I can send whatever. So you could have like one topic here and I could say, hey, look, this is the notifications for any sort of SSH that's happening on my network. And then, you know, it could be like, oh, hey, you've had an SSH attempt. And let's set that up as an example and I'll show you how that works. So this is their documentation and a link to this will be in the description as well as mine, which will take you through just a setting up the Docker container. Again, we'll get to that in a second. You can see here, there's a whole bunch of ways to, you know, add headers and all of that to make it look good. So for example, I could grab this one. I can paste it in. We'll change the, that one from using the public server to my one. Grab that, hit enter, and there you go. So you can see here, you've got like different priority levels. You can set a lot of things up using this. So we've got examples here. And if we scroll down, you can see a lot of things. You can set up cron job. So once a cron job is finished, it sends a notification. So load disk space as well, right? So you can set up all of this cool stuff. So let's set up this SSH login alert, right? And then I'll show you how you can get this set up for yourself. So last example. 
So let's copy this and I'll go edit this file here, the sshd file. So jumping onto my server, we'll scroll right down to the bottom and we'll paste that in there. So you can see here that it's going to be using or looking for a notify SSH login shell script, right? And this is where it's going to be located. So we're going to need to make this file. So let's copy that. Now if I just do a sudo nano with that directory, and now I can go back to that example and there should be a script we can grab. And here it is. So I can grab that script, come back here, paste that in. And what we need to do is change this here, right? We need to change it to our topic, of course. So I can just put my directory in. How about we make a new topic for this one? Let's go subscribe to topic and we'll call this one SSH login. And we'll subscribe. Coming back here, SSH hyphen login. Nice and easy, right? Save that, close down of there and We've, so we've made the shell file now. So what I need to do is also make it executable. Otherwise, not much is actually going to run here. And now we'll connect to it and we should get a notification on the SSH login. So let's try SSH back into our server. And bam, there you go. So now we've got an alert saying, hey, look, there's an SSH login from this IP address. So this is fantastic, right? This is, if you can think of a way, if you're running a script or anything within your Linux server, you can then send a notification to notify and then get, you know, your push notifications on your machine, on your Android phone or your iPhone. Now, there is one thing I do wanna note before we jump into the install side of things is that if you are an iPhone user like myself, so coming to this documentation, if I just come back up here, it says, you know, iOS app not refreshing, right? So you'll get a notification but you have to like manually refresh your topic on your phone and the app to get the notification um and he's got the issue here and it's mainly that he doesn't really understand how to fix it and he needs you know an ios developer to help him out here so if you're good with ios development uh, maybe you could have a look into helping this out if you're on android and just using it on your desktop uh, stuff like that then notifications work just fine it's just ios for whatever reason so if this sounds all interesting, I'm going to show you how you can get this all set up using Docker, really straightforward, and we can go from there. So this is my TikToks docs. This is my documentation page, right? So what I tend to do with this website is I just, out of all of the documentation that a service has, I just grab their Docker Compose, put it here, make it really straightforward rather than all the other stuff around it, right? So this here is all you need to deploy notify so what we'll do we can grab this and i'll walk you through the entire install if you'd rather just do it by yourself i have a link to this documentation page in the description as well for you to follow along with just if you want to do it by yourself or follow along as we do this no problem first off what we need to do is go to our server so i'm on my server now so what i will do is i'll change directory into docker and we'll go into the notify folder so i just like to make a folder for every one of my docker compose environments right it's just a nice way to keep things tidy but then in here, I already have the Docker Compose file. So if I go into the Docker Compose file, we can have a look at it. So what I've done is I've just grabbed the exact same Docker Compose file from my documentation site and pasted it in here. But what I've done is I've just made a couple of changes and all these lines are explained in the file, but also in the documentation. Just starting from the top, we're using the image, right? Notify, and the container name will be called Notify. And there is a command here called serve, and this is what actually runs the server, you can see here. And then the environment, so this is good, you know, if you wanna make sure that when the notifications come in, they have the correct times. So I've just set mine to Pacific Auckland because that's where I am. Now, what we need to also do is set up our user. So this is the user ID and the group ID. And if you want to figure out what your ID is, I'll show you. We'll just quickly exit on this. Type ID in your terminal. Bam, there you go. You'll get your ID. And as you can see, 1000 is for TikToks and the group ID is also 1000 for TikToks, right? So just type an ID. They'll grab, they'll give you your ID that you need. Make sure you put that in here. So again, 1000 was for me. Now I've changed this from the standard directory. I like to have any folders or any data that is for my containers in the same file as the docker compose so that's why what i've done is i've just got the cache and the etc in my documentation you can see here though this is what they have in their official um documentation as well is that it's just using the existing directories that you have on your machine but i don't like to just chuck my container stuff in with you know my existing file system i like to just keep everything in that folder it's up to you if you want to change it or not um but just letting you know i have so if you are following with me, uh, with having them in the same directory, so if you're going to have just cache and etc, we need to make those folders first. So we'll do that before we deploy this container. 
the port so by default it's on 8080 but 80 is used on pretty much all of my machines and if you self-host a lot of services 80 will probably also be used up for you as well so just make sure you find a port that's not in use uh, 8075 is not in use for me just don't change this one we need to leave that as 80 for the container and then it also just has a health check and don't change any of this it's just an internal check it's doing to make sure that the container is healthy and then we've got restart unless stop so this just means that if our machine restarts our host machine restarts uh, this container will start automatically now remember we need to make that directory of etc as well as cache and we can do an ls and that's what it should look like if you're following exactly how i'm doing it so we've got cache and etc and the docker compose right so what we can do now really straightforward and simple docker compose up hyphen d and hit enter and this will create our container as well as the network uh, i've already pulled the image hence why you didn't see that your one might be taking a little longer but that's fine so once it is all up and running we just need to go to the ip address of our server that's running this as well as that port that we defined and i'm going to put in the ip address and hit enter and here we are we are now on my notify service right this is the dashboard this is what i was showing you before and you should hit this as well but what you will see here and, I'll, and i'm covering these steps in this process because i want to show you that if you just try access it over the ip address you're going to get this message here notifications not supported notifications are only supported over https this is a limitation of the notification api so as you can see here we are connected just over http on that ip address right 192.168.128.8075 now there's several ways you can go about fixing this so what i do is i have local domain names for all of my services and i do this by using nginx proxy manager and i have videos on this i've dedicated videos on all of this and i'll leave them in the description and what this allows me to do this is my nginx proxy manager and it might look um intimidating but it's just i have a lot of services and I'm not going to go into too crazy detail here, but I've just essentially assigned a fully uh, qualified domain name to this IP address. So I can just go to this notify.techdocs.nz and that will have a HTTPS, it will have a certificate like an SSL certificate. It's the exact same service. We don't have that error message anymore and we are on the HTTPS notify.techdocs.nz. So once you've got your notify set up, I'll have a video in the link uh, showing you how I solve this, right? How I have uh, Nginx Proxy Manager and, and as well as my Pi Hole set up to manage all of this. If you've got your own DNS solution, just use that as well. But that's how you get around that notification. And again, we now have the service up and running we can now subscribe to a new topic and by default on the desktop app it will use your server name you can see here notify.techdocs.nz if you're setting this up on a phone and you've downloaded the app on your phone you will have to make sure you click use another service because by default it will try use the notify servers and just change it to your one here right which will be your domain name um, and then you can use the topics and that ssh login server uh, script should still be running so if i log out log back in we get the notifications because i already had that already set up i hope you like the sound of notify now notify you know with the ios issue of not getting notifications it's kind of a pain for me so i won't use it for anything critical uh, i've got other services for that uh, just being honest uh once that's patched though it'll be really good i will have the notify dashboard on like a little rack i'm building so then i can see notifications as they come in and i'll be able to hear the notification if i'm in the same room but you can also have it, you know, sending notifications to Discord, all of that good stuff. Just check on the documentation or show you all the support that they have. But any questions, ask in the comments or jump into the Discord. A invite link is in the description of this video. So jump in there if you have any questions at all. I'm more than happy to help. But yeah, make sure to subscribe, like the video and check out my merch if you like. I have uh, this awesome cup here that I'm, <laughs> uh, that I'm drinking some tea out of. It's great. But thank you so much for all the support lately. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.